their knowledge, their expertise, their professionalism amongst the youngsters, amongst the young professionals working in the field. So we call it as mentorship. So we are pursuing this uh, through PMA. We have large, more than four, 450 uh, professional mentors available to you for your uh, benefit, you can say. Uh, whatever you are, you need, whether it is HR or uh, entrepreneurship development or sales and marketing, so whatever subject, yes, our professional mentors are available for you to help you. So this is what is the uh, general information about the uh, Pune Management Association. So I take this opportunity to well, not only welcome you all to PMA Fold, because as, as you know, PMA is an organization of volunteers, so you can join us as volunteer. As I said, there are, or you might have seen the slides, uh, there are 14 verticals through which we are working. So you can join uh, vertical of your choice. So not only of your professional expert, but you can join other, other verticals also so that you can get enriched experience in other fields also. So this is one of the motives. Uh, not only that, whether you are member or not member, you are always welcome to give your suggestions, comments about the programs. In fact, we generally ask what, what sort of programs you expect from PMA. So yes, we are open for the suggestions. You can always mail your suggestions and we'll definitely take care of the suggestions. Now with this brief introduction, I'll hand it, to, hand it over back to Mr. Biman Gandhi, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pradeepji, uh, sharing information about PMA and uh, recent restructuring that we have done about our different different verticals. I think it is really a uh, you know, good call from your side to all the people who are still not member of PMA. Uh, getting PMA membership is very easy. Uh, it's very, very economical, I would say, as well. And uh, like uh, Pradeepji mentioned, you know, it is uh, going to be very, very beneficial for your personal as well as professional growth. Uh, the next person that I'm going to invite uh, to the dais today is someone who is highly energetic young lady from HR uh, profession. Uh, Pradeepji already mentioned her name that she is founder of Divine HR Forum. Her name is Preeti Sakhare. She is master's in personal management, uh, but he's also a recipient of several accolades to her name. Uh, she is a recipient of President's Award, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award, the former president of India for humanitarian uh, activities. She has uh, received uh, award uh, from UNDP on professional with diversity. Uh, Peace award by national culture, uh, that is CV, uh, that is uh, National Culture Council of India. Uh, pardon me for that. And uh, she has been, you know, an outstanding performer with uh, various organizations that she has worked with. Priti, welcome to you to this event, and we would like to hear, uh, you know, uh, a few words from you. Uh, thank you to PMA, and uh, I welcome to you all for today's session. It is for the employee retention things, and uh, as a part of Divine HR, as a founder member of that, uh, I welcome to you all once again. And uh, today's topic is really a very interesting that has been uh, introduced and uh, explained by Ms. Uh, Janet Ma'am. So I hope all are getting a very valuable uh, inputs from Ms. Uh, Janet Ma'am. If I talk about uh, Divine HR Group, a uh, Divine HR Group is formed in last year in 2000. Uh, in 2020 only we have formed this and it is mainly for the women's HR leaders, those who are working in a different diversified uh, in a industry, in various industries. And uh, so we are sharing knowledge as per that uh, we are doing some CSA drive also, and uh, we're doing a number of things in this. So in this, we are uh, empowering the women's, that is one of the uh, main motives that we come up in that, how we can uh, raise uh, women's and uh, we can help it out in various ways. So for today's session, Style by welcomes to you all and um, hope you all are enjoying today's session. And welcome to Miss Janet, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over thank to you, Gandhi, sir, for inviting yeah. me today also. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming and thanks for bringing several people from your uh, group. <laughs> 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, in our last event, you know, which was held only on Monday, I spoke about the vision of our center of excellence, which is for entrepreneurship development. Today, uh, I would like to take it further by sharing some details, some more details on how this center of excellence, that is for entrepreneurship development, is equipped to deliver the vision. Within our COE, we have formulated several sub verticals. Uh, modern day entrepreneurship starts with a new, uh, with the new generation. It starts with uh, you know taking shape right in their university days. We call it you know to tap the talent when they are young. We have a vertical for academics, which is led by one of our academicians uh, member. His name is Mr. Shopan Ago. For last one decade or so, startup has become the buzzword. On one hand, every year there are lot many startups which are coming up, but unfortunately there are high percentage of them do not really take off. We intend to do everything we can through our our startup a sub vertical within this COE and it is led by CA Vivek Jain. For those who have been in business for some years and are already a successful entrepreneur, and they always have a dream to soar high, we are there to support them and take them to the next level. Also address their challenges and obstacles. Today's program in many ways is related to them. It is under the focus of existing entrepreneurs uh, sub vertical and currently I am leading that sub vertical. While we are doing all of this for a lot of people, we have not really ignored the power of women entrepreneurs. Globally, there are the largest untapped reservoir of talent in the form of women. Ms. Smita Despande is leading uh, from our COE. She is member of uh, our COE. She is leading the effort through this sub vertical for one entrepreneurship. We have also recognized, like Pradeep Ji also mentioned in uh, her brief, in his brief, that uh, we have recognized the importance of coaching and mentoring at different stages of entrepreneur's journey. PMA intends to have its own model of coaching and mentoring, and Dr. Sanjay Lakade is leading this sub vertical under this COE. Before I, my, before I end my speech, I would like to share a few lines about today's program. Employee retention, especially in small and medium business, is one of the long-standing issues which has not found a permanent solution. In my experience, there are some SMEs which are doing outstandingly good, exceedingly well uh, job they are doing. But on the other hand, there are businesses which are highly ignorant about it. One of the popular uh, organization consultant and an author, Peter Drucker, he says in his quote, and I quote, organization is above all. It is social and it is people in that context i'm sure you will find today's program highly relevant and more than sure that you will have some strong key takeaways i would now uh, request uh, miss janet to take the dais but let me just introduce uh, janet mem uh, the speaker of today uh, janet mem is a senior hr consultant uh, she works uh, she has a very long history of working with some of the pioneering uh, you know companies the companies which we can call as you know pride of pune she has earlier worked with uh, uh, Kirloskar, uh, sorry, Punawala Group Company, uh, Alpha Laval, and then later she also worked uh, in a capacity of HR person for Lavasa project, which is known to mono, many of the people in country. She heads uh, currently HR and customer relationship at Mohar Group, which is a real estate company, and she has varied and rich experience of over 22 years in corporate sector. Her expertise in setting the system and process processes are impeccable and she specializes in crafting the standard operating procedures. Janet ma'am, over to you. Uh, let's hear from you on the topic of the day, employee retention in small and medium businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Biman, sir. Um, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Pradeep, sir, for um, uh, uh, Poonp, sir, for Mr. Ram Tirtakar, of course, you, Biman, sir, uh, Mr. Dattatri Ambulkar, for giving me this opportunity, and of course, to HR Hopes and uh, HR uh, Divine for uh, collaborating with the PMA uh, and uh, being present here. Uh, and I do hope, you know, collectively as HR is not and never ever will be a standalone uh, activity. It is always and almost always a collaborative affair. Of, um, uh, activity and I uh, would um, uh, hope that even today's program will be a collaborative uh, effort. So uh, thank you very much. And with these uh, few words, I'll uh, start my presentation.
just give me a few minutes. Please give me a few minutes. Uh, are you able to see this? Yes. Are you able to see the slides, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. Can you make it full screen? Yeah, you right. can go full screen, ma'am. Yeah. Right. Yes, right. it is now. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, so today's uh, topic is one of uh, interest to all of us uh, because of uh, uh, the, the you know the, this uh, scenario of employee retention that we see in small and medium uh, companies this is a small endeavor to uh, see how best we can uh, find some solutions to address this uh, the objectives of this program in uh, brief the focus areas would be to understand some vital reasons that employees leave organizations why is it important to grow and nurture uh, talent and get them aligned to organizations' missions. What are the costs of high employee turnover? And what are some reliable employee retention uh, strategies that uh, uh, business, uh, business owners could adopt to retain their employees? So uh, this is in a uh, nutshell, uh, uh, the primary reason, some of the primary reasons why employees uh, decide to um, leave organizations we just go into them in a little more detail uh, one of them is a job mismatch that is the ground reality on joining is different like when you have an employee being recruited on the, the job uh, many times the jds are maybe not discussed in detail with the employee and uh, because of uh, his um, what is in you know, urgency to get the job on hand and uh, because of his uh, need to find that job he joins in but once he joins in he finds that the ground realities of the job which was explained to him the purpose for which he was employed and what actually he is doing are two different are not in sync uh, so also it happens that there is no clarity on the components of uh, the salary like you have uh, several breakups to the salary uh, your basic the hr there are certain deductions statutory deductions which need to be confirmed and explained to the employee uh, before he joins in so that he is crystal clear exactly what his uh, salary package what will what will be his uh, take home salary and what will be his gross salary uh, many times uh, the next reason uh, could be for a low pay package uh, many times employees do join in companies because maybe that is the only uh, job at hand at that particular point of time and uh, companies also think that okay we need a person in the name employ the person but uh, over a period of time, he gets disillusioned with that kind of pay package when he starts comparing it to the others in the team. And that becomes a motivating factor for him to leave the organization. Uh, then with the springing up of so many companies and new opportunities, and this is a trend which will always continue and remain, and it will be something uh, which will uh, which we will need to face, and uh, uh, and it's it is a challenge that we will uh, have to encounter. Uh, but when uh, employees see that they have other companies and uh, better opportunities, they leave for even you know a small bracket in uh, salary or small hike in salary and they would decide to leave and go then when they have differences of opinion or disagreements with the superiors this is one of uh, the kind of a major reason why uh, people do leave uh, usually a, a common uh, thought process is that uh, employees usually leave when their salary package is very low but there i mean it has been proved that employees leave their companies and more so their managers they leave bad bosses rather than leaving the companies so many times it is it becomes the 
uh, you know prime responsibility of the superior to ensure that he gives that comfort level and uh, cordial working atmosphere within the organization then poor interpersonal relationships leading to conflicts which is uh, with their colleagues when uh, they are uh, in working we almost always produce our best results when we are sharing excellent um, relationships with our superiors as well as our colleagues and peers when that portion of uh, 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 the job is missing uh, that leads to some uh, thought thoughts in the mind of the employee wanting to leave the organization a lack of career growth and uh, uh, progression this is a really a big and a huge uh, deterrent when a person has been in a job for a period of time and he keeps doing the same job and he does not see any growth or any progression in uh, uh, his contribution or in the kind of work that he will be doing it leads to a kind of a dissatisfaction and perhaps one of the reasons to also leave the organization the monotonous job kind of falls into the similar bracket when day in and day out he keeps doing the same job and there is no uh, what you say um, kind of you know uh, lateral uh, there are no opportunities for uh, uh, um, showing his talent on a lateral front that also gives him an incentive to perhaps look off for another job uh, lack of recognition now this is 100% in the hands of the uh, management when uh, there is a total lack of recognition on the part of the management for all the efforts that the employee has taken and it's just taken for granted over a period of time uh, the employee no matter how uh, you know good a good performer he is over a period of time he does get disillusioned and would prefer to find you know look out for other greener opportunities for personal reasons personal reasons could be for family reasons now maybe they are required to be at a certain place in their villages at with their parents so for that reason also employees leave and this is particularly prevalent in our ms msmes where we find that your migrant laborers they usually leave for locational preferences family domestic issues and for personal reasons the poor working environment is also something which is very much within the hands of an employer uh, to ensure that uh, the working environment is pleasant there is adequate lighting uh, proper toilets are provided for uh, uh, the employees uh, if these things are not uh, uh, available the employee over a period of time will look out for opportunities where he gets these needs satisfied a job misaligned to personal goals i would like to like to tell you you know all of us in life we have our own uh, desires we have our own commission statements for our own lives we have our own values because all of our lives are dependent upon those value systems and when we get into a job uh, when we find that there is no alignment in our value systems as compared to the uh, as conversely with the uh, with the uh, organization it also leads to uh, dissatisfaction and another cause for uh, people to want to walk out and leave the organization a lack of uh, respect this also is um, uh, sadly to say it, it is also very important reason when uh, people leave and especially we just shared in a, a few minutes ago that when uh, people have conflicts with their peers or with their uh, superiors and you find that there is this lack of respect it also leads to you know conversely it leads to distrust and uh, respect is something no matter how small you are in the organization or you hold the highest position the respect is something all of us yearn for it is our you know innate desire to be want to be respected uh, this is in a uh, short nutshell uh, to uh, show you some of the top reasons why employees quit their job one is lack of management's uh, recognition of employee uh, job performances then relationship with coworkers 
a lack of contribution of their work to the organization goals and missions now uh, what happens uh, this is uh, the, this lack of uh, contribution of uh, their work it also ties in with their uh, personal goals and being aligned with the organization's uh, goals and uh, missions and uh, very often when they see that their role does not contribute to the company's mission and vision also is a deterrent uh, to employees uh, when employees are bored and they, their work itself does not challenge them to uh, you know perform even better or uh, raise the bar and raise the uh, scale is also another reason why they could uh, desire to leave their uh, jobs so this this is an um, uh, the importance of employee retention in msmes why is it so very important to have a, a, you know focus on employee retention one is the cost of employee turnover when an employee leaves with the organization uh, we almost always uh, you know most um, management uh, most of the people in management they think that okay it is very easy to get a replacement but replacements cost they they cost there is a high cost to replacements and the cost of an employee turnover we will see going forward how it impacts an organization now the cost in replacing employees replacing an employee can cost anywhere between 50 to 60 percent of an employee's overall salary ranging anywhere from 90 percent to 200 percent that means when you have a below i mean an entry level employee the replacement cost could be anywhere between 30 to 40 percent a mid-level mid-level managers mid-level employees anywhere between 50 to 60 percent and you have the top management when they leave and go uh, the cost of replacing them could be it could cost the company anywhere between 90 to 200 percent now these are some vital roles of skilled labor in msmes in today's time we have uh, seen uh, like you have the problems with the metro when uh, in msmes almost always the entire operations comes to a standstill when their employees are missing or their employees have moved on to their villages which we have seen right now with the covid pandemic where people have there was a mass exodus of people leaving and going to their hometowns and this results in suspension of operations it also stifles the emergency and the growth of the emergence and growth of small and medium uh, and uh, medium industries and uh, it can be a huge it can uh, be a huge cost uh, to replace these uh, employees some of the costs of high employee turnover could be low productivity loss of skills now what happens is when a person is working with an organization for over a period of time he gets accustomed to the rules and regulations of the organization and his skills have developed from the time that he joins in to the time that you know over a period of time he becomes a person of value to that organization and once he decides to move move out he takes along with him the skills that he has acquired the uh, company has invested in him to uh, to help him to acquire those skills but once he leaves and goes there is those the, those uh, skills you need to you know actually when you get a new employee he will not be able to match up to that productivity level then customer service and errors leading to losses you find that these employers are are you know in the uh, chain of productivity they are satisfying a customer's need the customer has certain ways in which they want uh, things to be done and uh, uh, these employees have now gone, gone so attuned and accustomed to the customer needs but when they leave and go that vacuum it is very difficult for a new employee to uh, grasp that uh, 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 that lacuna and to fill it so uh, the uh, once uh, the employees leave and go the advantages to the competitor is tremendous but in the organization itself there is a diminished trust and loyalty because this kind of you know situation um, it prevails in the entire organization and there is a you know low morale and an unhealthy working atmosphere which uh, spreads in the entire organization with the people who are still working in the company 
cost of onboarding new personnel the cost of hiring first and foremost it, it, it there is no likelihood that we would get somebody with with commensurate skills as uh, as the person who has left and gone because he's grown with the company and was accustomed to and attuned mm -hmm. to the working of the organization when you get somebody new on board he will take you will have to give him minimum 2 to 3 months to get actually accustomed to the working of the organization and to be actually productive and fruitful on the kind of role that he has been assigned to and the costs of hiring the advertisements that needs to be put in the interviewing processes the screening the onboarding processes are time consuming so over a period of time there is a loss in product production and the productivity which perhaps most employees we do not calculate we do not calculate the cost that we have already lost i mean the tremendous cost that we have borne with the person who has left and gone then the replacement costs are staggering like i just now mentioned to you uh, that it could be anywhere between 30% for an entry level a uh, 50% of an annual salary for entry level 150% for mid level and almost uh, 400% for a high level uh, uh, top management bracket okay now with this kind of a mindset what do we need to do we really as business owners we need to have a change in our mindset as charles darwin says and i would like to read that out to you that it is not the strongest of the species that survive nor the most intelligent but the one who is most responsive to change as human beings we are the most resistant to change but it is only when we adapt to change and we are agile and uh, uh, flexible that's when we find our greatest benefits are derived so one of the reasons where uh, what our uh, msmes we need to do as organizations is walk the talk and how do you walk the talk it is through the mission and the vision statements that we uh, uh, that we create for our employee there is almost always a purpose for which a, an organization is given birth to every uh, entrepreneur has and knows the purpose for which he has designed or has created an organization for which he has started his business so uh, the the vision it reflects where the organization desires to go uh, a mission defines how the people how the processes are going to be how the systems are going to be how the working is going to be so that we can get to our uh, vision and the values Uh, are defined and the values are the core being that we are as individuals and whom we need to be to be able to achieve this vision and the mission so here i would just like to share a small story with you uh, there was this uh, lady who uh, is walking down a road it is a hot uh, summer's day and uh, she finds that there are people who are uh, you know breaking some stones <clears throat> so she approaches the first man and uh, she finds him and uh, breaking those stones and she asks him uh, that what are you doing and he says, looks at her very angrily and he says can't you see i am breaking stones and he's wiping the sweat off his brow so she shrugs her shoulders and she moves forward and she asks another person who is also very merrily uh, breaking those stones doing the same job and uh, she asks him what are you doing and uh, he says oh i am you know helping to build this uh, temple this is going to be the tallest temple of the city so in a nutshell that just gives you a, a look as to where our people are are we you know are they embodying the vision and the mission that we have given them and are walking in the values that we as entrepreneurs have uh, you know laid out for them or are they looking at their jobs as just another job so uh, to uh, to communicate and embody the mission and the vision is a very important task for the owners and the entrepreneurs and the top management of an organization uh, first is to be able to articulate clearly defined organizational goals the vision and the mission to ensure the, their integrity in adhering to them now just as we said that they need to walk the talk 
uh, it's very nice to have a vision and a mission statement which is uh, beautifully typed written framed but if it just remains as a wall hanging it is not going to do it needs to permeate into our very beings when we are working and it also needs to be uh, uh, permeate into every single individual who works in that organization because it is people who bring alive the mission and the vision it is not just statements it is the people who bring them alive and make them worth worth the while of actually making those visions so communicating goals roles and responsibilities this is very very vital because you have a lot of you know uh, as hr people we have seen you know there is a lot of you know cross uh, uh, cross cutting into the uh, uh, jds uh, uh, kras you could have a lot of overlapping but if there is a clarity in the roles the requirement of what what actually is required from an individual you would find that he will, he is able to perform and also able to deliver exactly what has been required uh, uh, what is expected of him so as entrepreneurs driving the right culture and the values it is not just the it is of course the leader's role to drive the right cultures across the spectrum of the organization but uh, the the uh, it is every individual's uh, Uh, what you say duty and responsibility to ensure that you uphold and embody the vision and the mission statement of an organization so some of the benefits that we could see while we are nurturing and aligning employees to an organizational mission is that you almost always when employees are aligned to the mission you find that they remain with you for over a period of time and because of that long association their productivity is at its maximum and the workforce gives its optimized output which in ultimately of course benefits the organization then there is effective contribution like they do not look on their job just as a job but as something that they are contributing of their skills to and also bettering it in the time to come then a feeling of belonging that this is so very important because every time an employee joins a company we almost always call them as our family members right uh, and that feeling of belonging is so very essential for an employee to feel wanted to feel needed and because of that that sense of security he is uh, able to give his best over a period of time his skills are developed a uh, employee who joins in at an entry level and somebody who reaches a mid management level they are two different uh, uh, people because of the skills that he has acquired the uh, kind of interactions that he has had with the management with his peers and his uh, uh, colleagues he is able to uh, 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 i mean his contribution is even uh, greater because of the skills that he has developed then he also uh, demonstrates a high level of uh, loyalty simply because for over a period of time that he has remained with the organization and the organization he is so in sync with the organization's mission and vision that loyalty becomes a second nature to an employee and along with all of this the employee becomes a genuine asset to the organization now here i would just like to say that as a, when we always say that a person who joins an organization comes in and becomes the family of that organization so as a family we just need to co create not just do our specific jobs those specific jobs definitely have to be done but we need to co create those visions and missions far beyond the reach of just our desk and our cubicle so here i would like to quote what richard bach says the bond that links your true family is not one of blood but of respect and joy in each other's lives so, so we will come to some employee retention strategies the so i would like to uh, share with you that is uh, recognizing an employee for the kind of work that the employee is doing so celebrating successes is the uh, such an important uh, aspect for an uh, employee celebrating small successes every time an employee does a good job 
it took uh, a small uh, you know appreciation from the management goes a long way in him wanting to replicate those kind of successes over and over again and that's where you get a winning team now engaging special talents when employees join in when i recall in you know one of our um, uh, the employee requisition uh, uh, sorry the employee data sheets that we create and we have a one on one um, uh, chat with the employee especially just on onboarding we almost always ask them what are the other special skills and we find that you know you would be delighted to know that we had uh, some uh, we had a girl who was a classical singer and she had got you know a lot of accolades for her uh, talent so when we used to have our annual days that was the person whom we picked up for her to be able to give a kind of a performance and it gave her a tremendous boost and so also to all the other people and then you you find people who are very good in uh, the uh, you you know in drama in the uh, skits maybe was uh, some are very good in arranging certain things so those are the things if as employees we know about it or as an hr team we know about it we know exactly how you can tap into it so besides your work there are other things that are also appreciated and as uh, 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 managers and a top management lavishly appreciating your people almost always goes the ex allows them to go that extra mile whenever it is required and almost at all times and building a performance culture uh, that's really really very important because it needs to be inbuilt within the organization that every time you have a reward or you are rewarding a person it is almost always for a performance that he has uh, uh, given uh, or that uh, an expected performance it is not just expected but it is something where he has gone beyond the expected norm of uh, performance then having uh, continuous or frequent staff reviews is very very essential because people need to know uh, the kind of work that they're doing and when they get the feedback they are able to know the loopholes where they can actually improve themselves they could know the things that they are doing well there are certain blind spots which they might never ever know but somebody on the outside can see it and is able to explain to them in a more empathetic manner and carving a career growth you know involve involving people in decisions these are really small things but when you involve your employees in the decision making process they almost always you would get full cooperation in ensuring and in the implementation of those decisions then having cross training to when your employees you could find that okay the uh, training is very very essential but cross training is on certain skills which you know from an other department if you find that they are suitable and could work in another uh, department too you could give them a little training and then and i could they, they can enhance their skill and they get a added skill added to their skill set offering continuous on the job training and learning the uh, uh, that is a uh, given and we hope that most companies would do that because that makes an employee feel that he is uh, actually growing in his uh, uh, work he is growing in the, the kind of skill sets that he has acquired not just in his educational <clears throat> defining a clear upward job mobility now and this is something you know like leadership in the pipeline when the employees know that this is a chart that is that is drawn out and this is something that they can achieve over a period of time it gives them a tremendous boost in wanting to you know out do themselves and could you occur to overperform so that they are able to move and achieve those grades faster now accountability for better response accountability is very very essential because a lot of times a lot of responsibility is given to people but there is no accountability so accountability we need to ask the, the our employees that exactly what they are accountable for and they will they need to be responsive to the the, uh, the jobs that they are doing job rotations is just another way to uh, you know enhance their interest in their uh, skill set if uh, uh, giving them and it removes the monotony on the job that they are already working on 
now demonstrating loyalty is informing about the competitive advantage but what happens is that most people when they work in the organizations they really do not know that what you know what are the highlights of an organization that they are working in but if they if every single person is aware of the highlights of their organization the advantages of being in that organization what that organization is all about when that is articulated and you know communicated very wonderfully to all of these uh, uh, to all of the employees in the organization whether they are grassroots or at the uh, top level uh, it almost always develops and uh, a cohesive group according respect we spoke about it is so very essential that a person is treated with respect in material of what a uh, position he occupies in an organization respecting him just for the very fact that he is part of our family and he is uh, uh, doing a job which at that point of time it is only he and he alone who can complete that task and that kind of re uh, respect and making that person feel <clears throat> wanted will go a long way in him demonstrating loyalty encouraging open communication is where the uh, people are you know open to uh, receive feedback now feedback is jo uh, not just kind of a funnel like uh, from uh, top bottom but it is also bottom top uh, even the top management needs to listen to some kind of a uh, open communication systems and uh, are devised they are able to understand exactly what's happening on uh, the ground involving in succession planning is like i said this is the leadership in the pipeline it gives a, an employee a clear idea that there is a goal for him to achieve and there is some there are certain milestones which he can you know reach in his career path with the organization and he almost always develops that you know sense of anticipation and works towards uh you know achieving those positions okay uh generating a healthy culture uh flexibility uh, these are really small things when we offer our employees uh, say from flexi timings it might not be applicable for all employees but for some employees who work independently and whose tasks are not dependent so much on others you could offer them uh, flexi uh, timings uh, so that you i mean there is, it creates a healthy atmosphere within the organization offering competitive the pay what happens is that employees invariably almost always whether we like it or not they almost always share their their salary details with each other as well as with the competition what is happening outside and they are far well informed than we would ever think uh, think of so as employee as as employers it is almost it is always a right thing to do that you offer a competitive pay to and uh, an employee and over a period of time as he grows within the organization the, uh, he gets those periodic increments the building on an employee focused culture is where he keeps getting these bonuses the productivity allowances and uh, so on meeting with key personnel is also very essential because it gives an employee especially somebody in a, a blue collar worker or someone very down an entry level it gives them a tremendous boost that even the top management and the key personnel are interested in the kind of work that they are doing and they are really invested in the, uh, their career path and they are invested in their growth within the organization now some personalized employee experiences that we could have is a work life balance like right now as we have seen that people when they go to work especially in the it sector they work for long long hours and they tend to then ignore their families because they are working way into the night they work on uh, um, the weekends Uh, here, I, I mean, I would like to share with you about what Mr. Narayan Murthy says. According to him, that your work should be planned in such a way that it does get completed within the time allotted for it, or then it just means that you have not managed your work well. 
so this is uh, something this this is a culture that we need to embody in our people many times people be, uh, believe and they feel that if they wait for a longer period of time it just shows that they're very loyal or they're working very hard but none of that is very true in fact a efficient person will finish their work within a specified uh, time and move out and uh, continue his other life which is uh, with his family which is an equally important aspect of his life showing empathy on losses uh, uh, what happens is sometimes uh, an employee has lost his loved one a parent or something you know some such incident that has happened and if the top management is aware of this and they show that empathy and uh, they reach out to that uh, their employee and uh, you know express their condolences it goes a long way rather than just ignoring uh, these uh, you know these situations and wishing on birthdays and anniversaries i'm sure most most companies do that and it is a very healthy practice because it almost always makes a person feel special on their special days and functional committees appointed for employee support like having some kind of committees where employees could go and could be you know share their views or the kind of issues that they share that they face during their work <clears throat> If there are some kind of committees that are appointed for this, it <clears throat> almost always gives you a you know overall view of what is happening on the ground. <clears throat> Maintaining cordial relationships absolutely essential. Addressing differences as and when could they arise, rather than pushing it under the carpet, it is very very essential. Then avoiding partiality. Many times, you know, we always know that okay, teachers have favorites, but so also employers also have some favorites. But it shouldn't go to such an extent that you overlook and override uh, your favorite person's uh, mistakes, but you know, highlight somebody else's. So that absolutely a clear cut, uh, uh, you know. Uh, thinking needs to be there that partiality at all costs should be avoided and a fair play is accorded to all employees in refraining from unjust practices and ensuring equal opportunities to all. Some, you know, the small ensuring along with the salary. Now, what happens is the, the, when an employee gets the salary, of course, he's really very happy, but you have these perks and incentives that are given, which adds tremendous you know the uh, boost to his joy and happiness so small incentives like tea and coffee which is given to an employee uh, 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 some uh, companies also offer especially for uh, uh, you know people like uh, uh, the blue uh, blue collar workers or office boys they would give them uh, grocery packets or uh, uh, you have uh, you know a salad bar which is uh, set up uh, small incentives but they go a long way in uh, building up a kind of sense of loyalty to a company then uh, health care uh, accident and life insurance and medical insurance uh, this is a really vital and essential thing which almost all employees employers must look at as a vital ingredient to a salary package which should be given to an employee because uh, this is one thing that means a lot to an employee and long term service rewards now when people have worked with you for a long period of time perhaps we could also instill some fair uh, measure that if somebody has completed five years could you give them some kind of a reward or if an employee has worked maybe for every service year uh, some kind of a reward is given uh, stock options of course wherever it is permissible that could be introduced bonding measures bonding measures are you know arranging group outings like going for movies together or having team lunches these lunches are really rare they are, they are such excellent tools to build camaraderie among people and bonding employees to together and it's an amazing tool it really doesn't cost much but that sense of belonging and in fact it's also an avenue where the differences between your superior subordinates or among peers and among colleagues can get sorted out when they go for outdoor trips maybe 
or kapnya ka you know you go for kapnya some tours outside and this celebration of an employee the having you know and all of this should be definitely performance based that when you celebrate an employee of the month on certain criteria and parameters which is drawn out so people actually work towards uh, achieving uh, this uh, uh, kind of a grade wherein uh, they are called the employee of the month and their name is flashed on the dashboard and on the whiteboard their name is uh, name appears so, and that kind of a publicity gives uh, an employee a tremendous boost then employee involvement means mentorship programs uh, this is investing this is definitely an investment into our employees where we develop mentorship programs encouraging team buddies so when you have some uh, people who have joined in absolutely new and everything is just about new and you assign one person who would be along with that employee so that you know wherever he might not know where to get stationery from he might not know how to fill up a leaf form okay though the hr is there but when you have a team buddy that team buddy would work along with this uh, employee to make his uh, you know entry into the company absolutely smooth and he gives his best performance because his mind is not occupied in the kind of things that he will need to do for on a day to day basis then uh, taking up social uh, service activities uh, some companies have also done that you know like you adopt a certain village and then all the employees go together and to that they go to that village and really actually offer their services as a group which is an excellent bonding a bonding activity now introduction of teams for new inductions now here i would like to share an example of what we would do in lavasa in fact that was kind of one of my first jobs when i got there so we made a dossier of i mean it was an excellent excellent tool we made a dossier of every single employee in that particular team so in the city management services we had over 70 Yeah, uh, seventy people, and we had almost eight departments all collaborating and working together. Uh, but an employee who joins the team had to interact, you know, with almost at least one person in every single vertical. And how would he know? Because so we used this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, use this as a, a tool in creating this uh, dossier giving small look up uh, you know details about an employee the kind of work that uh, he is uh, doing what his core responsibilities are and that document was given to the uh, to, to the new joiner and one of the, the uh, one of us would accompany him we, could be, uh, we would have a schedule for over a week we would accompany him to every single employee of the team and uh, they would introduce each other and it would give an opportunity to that employee to introduce himself and talk about his job so the moment he talks about his job his sense of contribution increases and his sense of involvement and commitment to the organization is tremendous and that i mean it was really very well appreciated so these are some best you know to recognize and retain the best talent management practices is hiring the right fit getting the right person for the right job very very essential helping managers to become coaches like could be said just now like a team buddies to be, to become coaches for the you know entry level employees goes a long way in creating a sense of Like uh, you know, belonging, then uh, creating an innovation culture. Like uh, people have a lot of skills apart from their actual work, and within their job also, if they are encouraged to uh, be innovative, it goes a long way in creating a beautiful organizational culture. Inspiring uh, self motivation, investing in rewards and recognition, and uh, providing growth opportunities. so these are some of the reasons why employees actually stay when they are paid well they are mentored they are challenged they are promoted they are involved they are appreciated they are treated well 
then employee engagement as a tool of uh, retention employee engagement is uh, the employee's ability and the willingness to contribute and propel an organization's uh, success because it becomes a vital chain in the entire process of the the organization success so it is the the uh, the uh, integrity the high commitment a consistent performance which is going beyond what is actually required for the job and the position that they've been employed for is something that makes an organization absolutely successful so the four drivers of engagement would be the leadership the camaraderie with co-workers a job and a career satisfaction which leads to a high performing organization and uh, this is a profit cycle of uh, the entire uh, the employee retention that is when a cust when an employee is satisfied he gives his best productivity there is a better service customer loyalty is there customer satisfaction is there and profits are generated then now in the past jobs were only about muscles but today they are about brains and in the future they will be about uh, hearts uh, this is uh, in uh, this is just to summarize the reasons why people uh, would leave it it is just encapsulating exactly what uh, we shared so here i would like to share with you this quote that you don't build businesses you build people and then people build the businesses and here i would like to narrate to you a small incident about uh, you know in the adani uh, gautam adani group there was one person who uh, i mean because of some wrong hedging practices he had lost the company almost 50 crore and then the ceo of that vertical he comes and tells mr gautam adani that this is what has happened and this person needs to be removed from uh, from his job but gautam adani said i mean told him that look he has created a mistake and of course that uh, that uh, employee he had not done it deliberately it was just a mistake that happened but you we need to create a culture where people are allowed to fail so that through those failures they are allowed to learn and gautam adani says that i do not want my competition to gain from the from this uh, failure that he had because tomorrow this man will never ever make this particular mistake but we will make up that money but we cannot lose this particular talent so with this i will end the presentation and i thank you for your patient hearing uh thank you so much uh, janet ji uh, am i audible yes yes sir okay thank you so much you timed it so very well uh, you know you i think you started around uh, you know 15 or 16 minutes past right, right, sir. and finished just I'm in time to see you uh, thank you so much and that is really really important to you know keep a watch on time uh, i will summarize the session little later right. i would like to take with your permission i would like to take uh, take up some interesting questions on your way yes of course sir the first question is uh, from uh, smita madam and uh, she is asking uh, can you guide her on setting up the reporting system of employees in a small business and uh, everything that you there is another question also from the same uh, person uh, smita ji uh, she is asking whether all of that you spoke about can yes. be applied in a retail business uh business is a uh, business sir if you decide to have systems see fundamentals of business do not change no matter what the business is so however it is you just have to adopt them to suit your particular environment and the kind of work that you are doing when you are talking about a reporting system i think that's what smita ji was asking that how would you detail a reporting system right sir that's what you uh, as yes uh, so uh, for that i i guess batata ki kaise kaise thanks for the uh, vivek ji your mic uh, can you please make your so thank you janet ji please yes, uh, yeah i i suppose that all of us have organizational charts and in the organizational chart you know exactly uh, where the uh, you know positions are placed and who and how the hierarchy works so once that is decided and you have a you your you know robust jd in hand it is very easy to adopt this and to ensure and to know how roles are designed and who reports in to whom and how that reporting pattern is done okay well right. and the next question is from uh, our coe head for hr uh, vibhakar ji uh this question is will you please talk about exit interview 
uh, with your permission vibhakar ji can i just rephrase this question uh, my rephrasing goes like this how the input from an exit interview can be utilized for building your employee retention strategy correct correct absolutely absolutely now exit interviews are uh, something of vital vital importance because an employee is already almost always he is leaving the organization but if we have a robust manner in which that interview is conducted and actually find out that what are the reasons that he is uh, leaving for it gives you an avenue and it gives you you know opens a, a vista of opportunity for you to correct those things that need to be uh, corrected or if you could uh, and uh, also to implement certain things which needs to be implemented and maybe to uh, remove certain uh, you know unpleasant uh, aspects which could be a deterrent for the employee exiting that organization okay. so i hope that answers you yeah certainly you did uh, then the next question uh, is uh, from payal jaiswal ji she is asking how to hire candidates or trust the person or employee that they will join the organization or they are looking forward for a long tenure in an organization i think it's an interesting question how do you judge a person when you are hiring that he is going to stay with us for a long term uh look now that is a dicey question i i guess when we appoint a person and we take them on the roles we almost always wish that they would they they would stay with us for a long time but in you know here i would just like to share my personal experience with you it is good to go back to the history of that person from his cv and do tremendous i mean i mean to do rigorous reference checks so many times we do not rely on the reference checks but reference checks gives you a lot of information about the employee and it, you could almost always see the history of the employee how long he has worked in a certain organization and what exactly is he aiming for i mean what is his career path and growth and if you know that as an organization you are able to meet uh, meet that uh, career uh, and uh, aspiration i am sure he will he or she will definitely be a part of your team for a long period of time to come okay thank you and the next question comes from uh, manoj ji manoj uh, cheriyar he is asking what is your opinion about theory uh, stroke practice of letting go 20% of the people every year and hire fresh talent do you recommend that Uh, well now see here i would like to uh, share with you about uh, maruti so what does maruti do <clears throat> one of the uh, you know employee retention strategies is also to take back those people who have retired from your organization and maruti does that simply because they know that they have invested so many years in that organize in that employee to build their skills to such a level so even if they have exited the company their value to the company or the things that they would bring to the table would be so so valuable now when you are cutting off people from the organization whatever percentage as you have mentioned maybe it could be a requirement or you just need to know the reasons why those uh, people have been asked to leave whether they are uh, what is you know they are uh, unpleasant elements to the organization if they are deterrent to the growth of the organization those are the things that we first need to to look at and uh, and or they do not i mean if they are not a fit to the job that you have appointed them for there are a lot of things where employees promise when they come on the job but when once they are on the job it perhaps might their uh, contribution might not be as expected as you know uh, as was expected so in mm -hmm. that uh, i mean at uh, in that scenario perhaps parting ways could be a good option okay great i think that's a that's a great advice uh, janak ji uh, again with your permission you know we have three or four more questions lined up i definitely would like to retain the participants you know today's topic was on employee retention but uh, participants if you all are agree we will not take more than 5 minutes before we close formally close the session but there are some interesting questions so i would like to really throw it to our speaker of the day today right sir yeah uh, thank you janak ji uh, 
CA Chandrasekhar Lumia is asking, uh, he's, he's first commenting that the education level is going down. Everybody wants money without any commitment. And because of that, costs are more and clients are not ready to pay for. What is the solution? Uh, but, uh, sir, uh, would you just be able to uh, repeat that? Uh, you, he's, he's talking about education. Yeah. Uh, that uh, uh, the ed education uh, system is slowly deteriorating. Right. Uh, that and, that and, is one comment that he has made, and the other comment that he has made is, uh, you know, people uh, are you know looking for higher pay paychecks right. without any commitment. So obviously the costs are going very high, uh, and uh, right. clients are not really ready to pay for it because the cost is an integral or you know one of the heavy components on everything that you are doing in your business. Absolutely. So yes. what's the solution? He's That's true. That is a dilemma which we are, which we as HR people and especially those in recruitment definitely face that, uh, you know, people come for interviews and you find the right fit, you employ them and only to find that they go back and renegotiate with their organization and uh, definitely and do not join in. So all of the effort it, that you've put in to recruit that individual has really gone uh, gone for a toss. I, I mean, you have not reaped the benefit of uh, the kind of exercise that you have uh, and the efforts that you have taken uh, over that employee. <clears throat> now, uh, what could be a solution for uh, uh, such a uh, because such a situation would be that you never ever employ an, an individual till he brings a exit letter from the previous company that he has worked with. Now, once that is there in hand, then you know that he is never ever going to go back or that he is committed to you. So, it, I mean, he just needs to keep his uh, commitment. Uh, but yes, in the course of our uh, career, we have all experienced this and over a period of time, we have learned to grapple with the situation. And this was one of the ways that you, uh, you do it, that you almost always, uh, uh, you know, um, insist on getting a uh, exit letter from uh, from the previous employee. employee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one interesting question uh, uh, coming from Sheetal More. And I think, you know, those who are business owners here of small and medium businesses probably would be really looking for your insight or opinion. Uh, she's asking whether doing a bond with employee is advisable uh, you know, so that they can stay with the organization for a longer duration. Uh, what I think now, now see, there are two sides to uh, this uh, particular thing. When you see that an employee is of great value to an organization, entering into a bond is a good thing because then you are assured of his presence with you, growing with the organization over a period period of time. Though uh, you know, on a personal basis, I really don't uh, think bonds work. But uh, then, if you have to nurture and grow a talent with you over a period of time, because it is people who build organizations, and it it is the your uh, talent that is most important. You know, recruiting the right kind of persons are really very essential, and especially uh, uh, bonds. You would enter into bonds for people who are of a higher cadre rather than the mid-level. The mid-level, maybe you could have an inbuilt clause within your appointment letter that if you leave within these three months, you will forfeit your salary or whatever, no bonus payment, those kind of things. So individual, I mean, a company on individual basis, you could devise certain methods where you protect the interest of the company, but entering into bonds with people of high value and who would give you a long range contribution for the benefit of the company is not a bad idea. It can be, you, you can institute it. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for that advice again. Uh, uh, one last question from uh, Ruby G. Uh, Ruby Chatwal G. Uh, she's asking, what's the in, in today's scenario? What's the role of unions in the industry? And here also, I would like to rephrase her question: uh, How can you take help of unions? Uh, you know, in terms of employee retention strategy. <laughs> Rav Dirtakar sir is the the most qualified to answer a question <laughs> like this. But yes, I will uh, make an effort. Uh, a trade union must almost always be looked upon as a the, uh, kind of you know partner to the organization. When you look at anything 
which is in partnership with you they almost always you know they infuse into you or they pour into you certain benefits which take your company forward so what is a trade union your trade union is just somebody who presents the workers views onto you and why shouldn't you want to listen to those those views there are so because so many things that you could be turning a blind eye to but here you have something on a platter which is offered to you giving you the views of what the employees actually feel what is the ground reality that is happening where the shoe is actually pinching the toe you get to know that and you need to take advantage of that and make them a partner within your you know within your process of growing the company and getting the right people and allowing them to work with you for a longer period of time and enhancing those skills i hope okay. that answers you yep okay so finally we have come to the last segment uh, of this uh, program yes. janet ji uh, thank yes. you so much for covering a range of topics under this very interesting program yes. thank you just sir. to name a few reasons for employee quitting the job it is certainly the in the hands of business owners or the managers to eliminate this through a good and transparent process i think you really spoke very well on that you also highlighted uh, a few strong points which are definitely the key takeaways in my opinion like the culture of the company mutual respect uh, career progression and personal growth aligned with organization's objective you also talked about the cost of employee turnover when we lose an employee remember we don't just lose a person but we also lose a lose a huge investment which is already done in upbringing that person sometimes it is also costing the reputation many times in a mid size organization people have the tendency to blame hr department for higher attrition but you beautifully explained that it is very important that the top management and the decision makers also take a uh, look at this aspect by doing walk the talk and explaining and reminding them about the goals roles and the objectives i would like to once again uh, uh, you know recognize the presence of participation participants without whom we could not have had this uh, great program participants you came in huge number thank you so much for your time and interest through your questions as they say you know it doesn't matter how good a singer is in a concert but the concert is complete only when the, the when it is equally reciprocated by the audience and you were that audience thank you so much 